Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizer Education. <coughs> um, we continue talking about solving problems. Now, as I, as I was actually saying many times, solving problems is probably one of the most important goals of this course. Now, there is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens. It's presented on unizor.com. And this course is called Mass Plus and Problems, which is based on that theoretical course, Mass for Teens, but presents certain uh, unorthodox problems, not exactly to verify how well you know the theory, but really kind of to train your, your mind to, to think creatively. So, um, most of these problems are not of a kind you probably can be presented in school. But again, in school usually you're presented with problems just to verify whether you are know, whether you know certain theoretical concept. Like for example, if they teach you how to solve quadratic equations, they will give you a lot of quadratic equations which you have to really solve using the same formula. Not very creative process. Now in this course, I'm trying to present certain problems where you don't really know how to solve it. You have to come up with certain new idea, new methodology. Um, obviously, after solving rather large number of these problems, they will start basically kind of looking like one another, which means some thoughts which you came up with before during uh, the working with uh, previous problems will definitely um, give you a clue how to solve the next one. So that's why it's very important to solve as many problems as possible because every new problem of this unorthodox type presents you a certain challenge and if you overcome this challenge it will be much easier to do the next one. Okay enough about philosophy, let's just solve problems. So the first problem is how to prove that the sum of square roots is irrational number. Now, what does it mean is irrational num number? It means that if I will suggest that it's represented as a um, fraction between two integer numbers and let's assume that if there is some kind of a reduction like both numbers are divisible by three so I will divide it by three so this is the minimum uh, minimalist so to speak um, representation of this rational number there are no common divisors between P and Q okay so if we assume this we have to come up with some kind of a contradiction if we will, it means our initial suggestion that this is a rational number is wrong, which means it's irrational. So, now before approaching this problem, I would like to approach, would like to solve something much, much simpler, which I think, I'm not sure, but maybe I have presented this problem in the main course, main theoretical course called Mass for Teens. What if I would like to prove that square root of 2 is irrational. Same thing. I assume that this is p over q, where p and q are integer numbers without common divisors. And I will just uh, change it into uh, square root of 2 com times q equals p. Uh, I will uh, square both sides. I will have 2 q square equals to p square which means that p is even number it must be divisible by 2 because p square is divisible by 2 now if p square uh, is divisible by 2 it means that p must be divisible by 2 um, why uh, well you can always represent any number as a product of prime number P1, P2, and P3 are prime, so this is the representation of P. Now one of them 
if there are no twos among these, then there are no twos among these. So P and P square must be even uh, or not even at the same time. So P square is even, which means I can represent it as P is equal to 2R, let's say, which means 2Q square is equal to 4 uh, R square, which means Q square is equal to 2 R square, which means Q is even number. So it appears that both Q and P are even numbers, which means we can cancel 2 and we can reduce the, we can reduce this fraction by 2, which I assume there are no common divisors between P and Q, that I have already reduced it as much as possible. So that's a contradiction. Now, why did I present this simpler case? Because this is exactly the same kind. However, it involves much more calculations, so to speak, right? So what, what are we doing? Basically, the same thing. So I will um, put like square root of 5 to the right and multiply everything by Q. So I will have Q square root of 2 plus Q square root of 3 uh, equals to P minus uh, P minus Q square root of 5, right? So I transfer 5 to the right and multiply everything by Q. Now I will square both sides. So I will have Q square 2 plus 2 Q square, square root of 2, square root of 3, so it's square root of 6, plus Q square times 3 equals P square minus 2 P Q square root of 5 plus Q 5 uh, square. Now, Q squared 3, Q squared uh, 2 plus Q squared 3, Q squared 5, so I can just reduce it. They are equal. So, why is it better? Because there are three square roots and, roots, and now only two square roots. Well, I will square it again. So I will have 4 Q fourths times 6. So I can put it 24 equals p to the fourth minus 4 p cube q square root of 5 plus 4 p square q square and 5. So it's 20. Now I will leave this on the right, everything else on the left. So it's 24q to the fourth minus p4 uh, minus 20p square q square equals minus 4p cube q square root of 5. Square root again. And now I'm not going to continue anymore. Because after this, you will see that everything, if you will square it, all, all the members except p to the 8th, when we will square this one, you will have p to the 8th. Everything else will have some uh, even number, 24, 24. So if you will, multiply, if you will square both sides, you will have 8 here, you will have something here, but definitely all even numbers, which means p to the 8 must be even number, which means p must be even. And if you will put it here, same thing will be with q. So basically, I don't want to spend time. It's obvious how, it will, it, how to proceed. But basically, that's, that, that's the way how, how you will get everything. So eventually, for Q, will, you will also need to have it as an uh, even number, which means P over Q can be reduced. 
Well, that's basically it. Um, I, I'm just, quite frankly, uh, don't want to spend much time, uh, lecturing time, uh, when you will do all this. Uh, I'm not sure, but maybe I will put some more detailed um, explanation in the written part. You see, every lecture on unizor.com, including this one, obviously, will have a textual part. So you have a video representation and the textual part. And the textual part, sometimes I might actually do all these calculations and, and put it there. But I would encourage you to do it, quite frankly, because it's a good exercise. You have to do it accurately. Well, you know, square of these things is, is, is a big one. It's a nine, it's three of them, so in square it will be nine members. It's a big deal. But uh, in any case, um, it's a good exercise, so I suggest you to do it this way. All right, so that's the first problem. Uh, basically, it's like uh, almost finished. I, I, I just don't want to spend any more time on the trivial calculations. But idea is the same. So P over Q must be, P and Q both must be even number because of all this. And reducible by two, which we assumed is not the case. Okay, another one is kind of interesting. It's extremely simple. However, there is an interesting theory um, interesting story actually uh, which happened with this particular problem and uh, uh, artificial intelligence which is right now in, in, in vogue kind of thing. So the problem is here is a function 5 minus 4x to power 1000 times 3x minus 4 to the power 1001. Now, p of x is basically a polynomial. I mean, if you will open the parentheses, if you will, if you will really use 5 minus 4x, you will raise it into tau in the power of 1000, you will have a polynomial and this thing also we will have a polynomial and then you multiply one by another it will have another polynomial so basically it's kind of rep can be represented as um, a0 times x to the power of what's the maximum power 2001 plus a1 times x to the power 2000 plus etc plus a2000 times x to the first plus a2001 uh, times x to the power of zero which is one. So this is polynomial in some kind of a form which is not really a, a canonical form. This is a canonical form of the same polynomial. So what's the problem? The problem is I would like to find sum of all coefficients from 0 to 2001. So, what I did, I went to a artificial intelligence website and just asked this question, what is the sum of, the, uh, of these multipliers, these coefficients, in the canonical representation of the polynomial which is given as a formula like that. Well, guess what? Artificial intelligence program, well, it's a computer program, it's a, it's a good search engine actually. It found that this is supposed to be like a Newton's um, binomial, so they used the formula for, Newtonial, uh, for Newton's binomial, got sigma of members, whatever it is, according to the polynomial, uh, binomial, sorry. Uh, same thing with this. You have two sigmas then, multiplied, gave the whole page of calculations, and came up with the right answer. Now, what is the right answer? Well, let's just think about it. The, the smart person 
if it's asked if this is a canonical representation of the polynomial p of x, what is the sum of all these uh, multiply all these coefficients? Well, that's actually p of one. If you will put one instead of x, all these x to the power will be one, which means you will have the sum of these uh, coefficients. But now let's calculate p of one in this representation, which is much easier because 4x, for x is equal to 1, 5 minus 4x is 1, 1 to the power of 1000 is 1. 3x minus 4, when x is equal to 1, is minus 1. Minus 1 to the power of 1001, it's odd number, 1001 is odd, which means one minus 1 will be multiplied by itself odd number of times, and the result will be minus 1. So it's 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. And again, as I was saying, this program, which I was talking about, did it, uh, I would say, brute force method, without thinking. And that's the difference, that my, my point is that that's the difference between artificial intelligence and the human being, smart human being. Because in some cases, you need some creative moment, I mean, it's kind of smart way of doing this. And in most cases, uh, I'm not saying all of them, but in most cases, all these programs, they are, well, like robots. I mean, they are doing something mechanically. Whatever they have taught how to solve the problems, they are solving exactly the same method. They do not really invent anything new, at least at this particular moment. They are just using whatever already known. And that's the problem. There are some um, students, if you ask them something which they were not really explained how to do beforehand, they will say, well, I don't know how to do it. Teach me and I will do it. You teach him and then they will do it. This is one kind of a way, one way, one approach with one type of uh, students. Other students, if you will give them the problem which was not explained how to solve it before, they will start thinking about it creatively. And that's the most important part, creative thinking. The purpose of the whole course, with whatever I'm just presenting, is to kind of force you to, to think creatively, to think about certain methods which might not be something which you have already been explained, in school or in, in, or in textbook or somewhere else, invent your own way how to approach this particular problem and solve it this way. And that's exactly the good example how smart people would do it thinking about some of these coefficients. They will say, okay, hey, if you put x is equal to 1, that's what you will get. So let's just put x to equal to 1 in, in, the, in, in the original formula and that's easy. So that's the difference, and that's why I think this particular problem gives you the idea about, well, what's the purpose of the whole course, actually. You have to think creatively and think about this. You, you look at this, you don't know how to solve it. Obviously, I do not expect anybody in a reasonable mind to do these uh, Newton's binomial and multiply them, etc. <coughs> it's just not the way people really should do in this particular case. Computers can do it, but people don't. People do it smart, in a smart way, and the smart way is this one. Maybe there is no smart way, and that's why we have computers and let them do it whatever, uh, whatever is necessary in a brute force way. But still, I mean, it's very important to find something which computers <coughs> cannot find because nobody taught them in this particular case. Now, if I will explain to computer program, which basically stands behind this artificial intelligence, that if you would like to find a sum of coefficients of polynomial, you have to really find it, the value of the polynomial, with x is equal to 1. Once I put it in there, it's already kind of a known thing, and the next time, maybe, computer program will do it the right way. But I have to teach it first. 
So the programmers should put it into the artificial uh, intelligence program, which basically does all these search things, etc. And it will find, okay, there was such a problem, it was solved that particular way, so that's what I will do it next time. Only things which the completely new require, obviously, this creativity. But again, it means that only people who are creative can can make certain progress anywhere. Computers don't do this type of thing. Computers just repeat whatever they have been told already about. Okay, next problem. Okay, there is an equation with two unknown x plus y equals 3x squared minus x y plus y squared. So, what I need is, well, I cannot solve this equation in, in, in just as, as, as is, because I have to really understand that one equation with two uh, unknowns obviously will give you infinite number of solutions. But the question is where I am looking for solutions. Traditionally, all these x, y equations are solved in the realm of um, uh, real numbers, sometimes complex numbers. But in this case, I would like to solve it in a different uh, domain of uh, numbers. Only among prime numbers, integer prime numbers. I would like to find solutions among integer prime numbers. So, we are narrowing down the possible solutions to only integer prime numbers. Okay. Now, in one case, since the numbers, uh, integer prime, line, pr prime numbers, is much smaller set than all real numbers, it's supposed to be easier. But still, but, you know, it's two uh, variables and, and, and one equation, so there is no like obvious methodology to solve this equation. It's not like a quadratic equation with one uh, variable. Okay, so as usual, it presents certain challenge. I did not ask, by the way, this uh, solution uh, artificial intelligence program. I, I wonder what it will what, what would give me, but uh, maybe it will start like presenting all the different, checking all the numbers, and but but number of prime numbers is infinite, so I'm not sure. Anyway, maybe I should try it, or you should try it. So, you have to, res uh, you have to solve this when x, r, and y are prime numbers. Prime. Okay, here is what, <coughs> what I suggest. First of all, let's express this as equation for x, where y is hidden in uh, in the coefficients. So it's uh, 3x squared. Now, all the coefficients with x minus x 3y and 13 would be with a minus sign. No, with a yes, but minus we have to, so it's plus 13. Okay? minus 13 x it would be here everything else is y y is 3 y square minus 13 y equals to 0 so this I can consider to be an, uh, an equation with x as unknown <coughs> and y is hidden in the coefficients now, if I'm looking for a solution for x, and x is supposed to be a prime number, um, my discriminant of this quadratic equation must be non-negative, right? So discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So it's a x squared plus b x plus c equals to zero. This is my equation. 
Well, A in this case is 3, B is minus 3y plus 13, and C is 3y squared minus. So this is discriminant, and it's supposed to be greater or equal to 0 to have real uh, solutions, right? We need prime solutions. Primes are real. So obviously, remember this formula, b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by, four by 2a. These are solutions. So we need this to be non-negative under the, under the root. Okay, fine. So that's discriminant. Um, okay. In this case, what's the discriminant? It's b squared. Now b is minus 3y plus 13, so it would be 9y squared. Um, uh, 2, uh, 39, 78, plus 78y, plus 169, that's b squared, minus 4ac. Uh, a is 13, so times 4 is 12, times this. So, uh, minus 12 times this is 36y square plus 12 times 13, 144, 156y. And this is supposed to be greater or equal to 0, right? So let's just simplify it a little bit. So it's minus 27y square. 9 and minus 36, it's minus 27. Uh, 78 and uh, 156, it's 234, 234y, and uh, minus 169. that's supposed to be greater or equal to zero. Okay, that's interesting now. You see, this is basically a parabola with horns down because it's a minus sign. So, if I will draw the graph of this parabola, I will have something like this. Since the horns are down, it's minus, so it's uh, open this way. Now, what are the roots of this? The positive, when it's positive, between the roots, between the, pl the places where it's equal to zero, you can actually calculate, at least approximately, the roots of this equation. I did, and one of them was something like between minus zero, minus one and zero, and another was between nine and ten, if I'm not mistaken, but I think I'm not. Which means that if we are looking for prime y and x, well in this case y, there are how many prime numbers are between, uh, between minus 1 and 10? Well, minus 1 and 0 goes out, so it's 2, 3, 5, 7. That's it. There are only four numbers of y which can be solutions of this equation if we are looking for solutions among prime numbers. Okay, great. You just do it very, very simply. You put it 2 and solve the equation, if you can, for prime number, or 3 and solve the equation for x, if there is a prime number as a solution, or 5 or 7. And as a result, you will see that as soon as you put 2 into this solution, you will have, into this equation, sorry, what you will have is 13, well, I'll just use this equation. So it's 3x squared. This is 2, so it's 6, uh, 19, minus 19x. Uh, 2 squared is 4, 12, minus 26, minus 14, right? 
equals to zero. Uh, so the solutions are 6, 19 plus minus square root, um, 19 square, so it's 20 minus 1 square, it's 400, 361, right? 361 and plus 4 times this times this, that's it's 12 by 14, 12 by 14, that's 144 and 24, 168, 168. Now, uh, 361 plus uh, 168 is 529, Am I right? 529? Um, 529, unless I'm mistaken, 23, it's uh, 69, 6, 4, yeah, 529 is 23 squared, so that's 23. Okay, 23 uh, and 19 is 42 divided by 6 is 7. Okay, we've got it. So 2 for y and 7 for x is a solution. So we found the pair, 2, 7. By the way, this is symmetrical to x and y. So if 2, 7 is pair of solutions, 7 and 2 will also be pair of solutions. So x is, x is equal to 7, y is equal to 2, or x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 7. So we have already found two of these. Now, if you will try 3 and 5 for y, you will see that there are no other solutions. I mean, I did try it. So basically, that's it. We found all the solutions. It's a pair 2 and 7 in this and that order. Well, that's it. So all these problems are presented on the uh, textual part of this uh, lecture. Go to unisor.com, courses, mass, plus, plus, problems, uh, algebra, and algebra 06. Okay, thanks very much, and good luck.